going to start this video on password recovery off with a little quote from Wikipedia about a term I don't think you really hear that often anymore, but it's catch-22. And a catch-22 is a paradoxical situation from which an individual cannot escape because of contradictory rules. Sounds like a couple of jobs I've had. The term was coined by Joseph Heller, who used it in his 1961 novel, Catch-22. And you may be thinking, hey, Chris, that's great. You're injecting a little culture in here, but what's this got to do with any kind of Cisco password recovery? Well, every once in a while, hopefully every very once in a while, you may run into a Catch-22 when it comes to your passwords. And one such situation could be, let's say you're telnetting to a router that you've telnetted to so many times before, and you either knew the enable password that you would be eventually prompted for, or we put that magic command privilege level 15 on the VTY line. So once you authenticated in at, on the VTY lines, you were put immediately into enable mode and all was well. But let's say that you're prompted for an enable password and you don't know what it is. Or even, it could be even worse, it could be the telnet password and you don't know what it is. Well, you call Fred the network admin and he doesn't know what it is. And you call Sally the network admin and she doesn't know what it is. And she calls two admins and they call two admins and they call two admins. You get the idea. No one knows the password that you need. And maybe they can even look at the config but if we've run service password encryption, you know, they're not going to be able to just read it and maybe they don't have permissions to change it. We haven't gotten into that. We won't get into it during your CCNA studies, but you can change privilege levels of certain commands. So maybe they don't have the ability to change it or, you know, maybe there's a direct connection to the router, but that's in user exec mode and that's not doing us any good. So we try to get into enable mode. We can't get in because we need the enable password. And we can't change the enable password until we know the enable password. There's your catch-22. And there could be other scenarios where you're going to have to do a password recovery, certainly. And when it comes to password recovery Cisco style, it's a little bit different than password recovery, say, on any membership site on the Internet, right? Because you go to log in, it's going to prompt you for a username and a password. And most of them will even have a link for, you know, did you forget your username? But they'll definitely have one for forget your password and they'll have a little something set up. You give them a little information or sometimes if it's Chase, a lot of information. And then they email something to an email account you would set up with them in advance. And then you can reset your password and just go forward. It is not that straightforward in Cisco land because there's really no one size fits all Cisco devices password recovery process. I wish there were. I wish I could show you one screen, one, two, three, four, bam, and you're done. Now, a lot of these processes have something in common, and we're going to discuss that and see some of that in action. But I've got a little bonus page for you here. It's not required reading, and I did do a bit.ly job on it because it's, as usual, a Cisco URL is three screens long. It's uh, bit.ly slash Cisco PW Recovery. And it's not required reading, but it's a good page to know about first for real-world networking situations. Because if you've got a password recovery device uh, situation, you really want to make sure you get the right information for your hardware platform. And that's a great way to do it. You can also find it in a Google search. It wouldn't be hard. But regardless of the hardware or how old the router is, more about that in a moment, we need to get the router into ROM monitor mode. That's part of just about every password recovery process. It's usually just referred to as ROMON, and it's sometimes referred to as the boot software. And this is a totally separate animal from the Cisco IOS that we're used to working with. ROMON commands are different, and they are limited. But one thing we can do in both of these, and I'll show you how to do both, is change the configuration register value. And doing so correctly, it's really the key, the core of Cisco password recovery. Now, a brief dad lecture here, but a very important one. The config register is beyond powerful because one of the things it does when you reload it, it tells the router how to behave as far as the boot process goes. So you want to change this only when absolutely necessary, and it's rare beyond, uh, uh, beyond any password recovery situations that you're going to need to change this. But you want to quadruple check what you changed it to before reloading the router because the config register change will take effect on a reload. It is not immediate. And one of the things that it controls is whether the startup configuration is going to be even acknowledged during the boot process. So to view the current setting for your config register, run show version. You will have to hit the space bar to see the register value because it's at the very bottom of the output. 
And here, we're playing around on R3, so let me run a show ver. And it does have a sh uh, startup configuration here on R3, as you can tell, first off, by the host name, R3 actually being set. So it's a very small one, but we do have a startup config file on this router, and you'll see why that's important in a moment. But some good information here, you know, first off, you know, what's the uptime of the device? Uh, when was it rebooted? Uh, why was it rebooted? There's some good stuff here in the middle of this. Then we have the usual cryptographic feature of warning. And we still don't see anything. We see some licensing information. And at the very bottom, I actually had to hit the space bar twice. Configuration register is 0x2102. Just this innocent little value that can just cripple your router if you set it to the wrong value, which is why we're going to be very careful. But that's where you spot the configuration register. Now, 0x2102, the one we're seeing here, is the default configuration register setting for many Cisco platforms. I don't want to say all, but most, if not all, that you're going to bump into. And one of the things this value does is it says... When you're booting, you know, look in the NVRAM, the non-volatile RAM, and that's where our startup configuration file is. Part of the entire process of password recovery is getting it to ignore the NVRAM. We're going to have to tell the router to ignore the NVRAM, and we do that by changing the configuration register. Let's go back to the screen for just a moment. So there's something else I wanted to share with you here, because what we're trying to do, again, is get into Raman mode. And there are really two different ways to do it, depending on the age of your device. Now, most modern Cisco routers, including the ones we're using in this course, have removable flash. And all you got to do is pop it out. And by doing that, you force the router into ROM monitor mode on a reload because there is no iOS for the router to load. Now, you always want to make sure that you're properly grounded and your hardware is off before you take anything out of a Cisco router, especially the properly grounded part, but I don't want you to get hurt either. So turn the hardware off when you're doing that. So having done password recoveries with this, with this kind of router, with removable flash, it's much simpler than it used to be. Because with older models, you need to reload the router, that's the easy part, change the config, reload the router, and you gotta send what we call a break sequence to the router during the boot process. And sending a break can be really tricky, and the sequence depends on the hardware you're using, the software you're using, whether the sun is up or not. I'm not really kidding. Uh, it can be pretty darn tricky. Uh, again, not required reading for the exam, but if you ever need to do that, if you ever need to send a break sequence, uh, bit.ly slash Cisco break will take you to a handy page that's got every piece of hardware known to man and how to send a break sequence. So uh, you also have to be physically present at a device, usually the older devices. Of course, you have to be physically present with the newer ones to take the flash out. But uh, they have something built into the password recovery process that would make you have to be there. So um, before we start working with the config register a bit, you will be working with it in the iOS and in Raman if you're doing a password recovery. But the commands are a little bit different, so you want to watch out for those. Uh, on the iOS config register command, we're going to use that in a moment. And when you're in raw monitor mode, just use confrag or confrag. However you want to pronounce it, just type it correctly, you'll be fine. And then follow it with the config register value that you want. When we come back, we're going to change the config register a couple times and see its effect on that router 3. And that is coming up next.